So today's uh, uh, is a service about God's grace, just reminding us of how we're saved by God's grace. So let's thank Him and let's lift Him up. Let's go to Him in prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, what a joyful morning. Uh, we thank You. We praise You for the beautiful sunshine, for the beautiful day, for safe travel, for those that have been traveling. Lord, for, for health. For some that have been uh, getting well and are able to be here, and others that are able to be here, we are just so thankful for that. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. As we go about this day, and we hear this theme weave throughout the songs and the, the scripture, and even the communion about your mercy and your grace, what you have done for us, I pray that we would honor you, we lift up your name, and we would, like a little child, receive that grace and give you glory and honor. Pray that the technology would work the whole time, keep everything connected, Lord. That's our prayer. That's our hope. That's what we ask you for. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. I invite you to stand. Diane is going to lead in the call to worship. And it will be on the screen. Good morning. The scripture reading is from Psalms 51, 1 through 12. Have mercy on me, O God, because of your unfailing love. Because of your great compassions, blot out the stain of my sins. Wash me clean from my guilt. Purify me from my sins. For I recognize my rebellion. It haunts me day and night. Against you and you alone have I sinned. I have done what is evil in your sight. You will be proved right in what you say, and your judgment against me is just. For I was born a sinner, yes, from the moment my mother conceived me. But you desire honesty from the womb, teaching wisdom even there. Purify me for my sins, and I will be clean. Wash me, I will be whiter than snow. Oh, give me back my joy again. You have broken me, now let me rejoice. Don't keep looking at my sins. Remove the stain of my guilt. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God. Renew a loyal spirit within me. Do not banish me from your presence. And don't take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and make me willing to obey you. Apologize for a couple of the spelling errors on there. And what a joy it is to not have to run down to the piano. So yeah. praise God, the butlers are back. Let's sing praise.
seated. If you join me in the corporate confession of faith, we all, we all believe, believe in, in our, our hearts and confess with our mouths that there is a single and simple spiritual being who we call God, the eternal, incomprehensible, invisible, unchangeable, infinite, almighty, completely wise, just, and good, and the overflowing source of all the good. You take a moment for a silent prayer of confession. Amen. Declaration of Pardon. Friends, hear this good news. By grace you have been saved. By grace you live. By grace you will one day be glorified. If you confess your sins, you are forgiven. If you confess Jesus is Lord, you are united to Christ in eternal life right now. Live today in relationship with the one who loves, gives, and forgives. Live today in peace. Let all those living in peace shout amen. 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 Lisa, can you turn my lapel down just a little tiny bit? I think it's probably too loud. Hi, girls. Thank you. Now, is that is that okay? Can you all hear me? Well, I want to tell you something really neat. But I'm really telling them too. Okay? Shh, don't tell them. Last night, Zachariah and I got to see the space station. Up in space. I had seen at about 9.40 on Facebook, somebody posted, at 9.51 tonight, you'll be able to see the space station if you look northwest. So I went outside, and I have an, an app that tells you what the, the constellations are, and I found the space station, and I started following it, and soon enough, I could see it. And Ryan and I watched it go over, and then all of a sudden, it was gone. I don't know why, I guess it was close, but people live on that. Did you know that? Did you know people live on a space station in outer space? And I got to talk to one of them once. His last name is Williams, and I met him at a, a conference because he loves Jesus. And he prays to Jesus in outer space. Isn't that crazy? And you know what else? You see the, the bread and the juice? You see that in you know what I saw? A lot of people don't know this, but you need to know this, that when Buzz Aldrin landed on the moon, he had communion. He had been given a communion kit by his church at home in Texas to have communion on the moon. So girls, I just want you to know that you can praise God anywhere. Anywhere you go, even if it's outer space, you can praise God. Who made you? What else did he make? What, what else did God make? He made you and everything, right? For his own glory. All right, let's pray. Let's pray, girls. Lord, thank you so much for Veda and Eliza. I pray, Lord, that as they continue to grow, they will never lose the enthusiasm they have right now for life, and that it will only grow as they grow closer to you and understand how you made them and love them. Thank you that we can praise you anywhere and anytime. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, girls. There you go. I think, I think it's J.
Jeff Williams. I'm not sure. I'd have to check that. But um, he is actually, I believe, has the, the record for the male that has been on the space station the longest. And he's quite the uh, believer in Jesus. He spoke at Grove City College's commencement several years ago. And uh, I met him at the pastor's conference I went to up at uh, Cleveland. And just standing there in line, like a normal person, the guy who's been in the space station the longest of anybody in history. Um, but uh, how awesome that we can praise God anywhere and everywhere. Well, if you have not been here for a while, or if you had just forgotten, because we haven't been really looking at it in the last couple of weeks, we've been going through the Gospel of Mark. And we got to chapter 10, and that's where we left off the last few weeks. We started about this time last year, or maybe in July or so, we started the Gospel of Mark, and we're all the way to chapter 10. We're going to pick up on verse 13 this morning, so if you want to turn in your Bibles to Mark chapter 10, we're going to start in verse 13. Before we read it, though, let's go to the Lord in prayer together. Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for the joy of this day. Thank you for the songs that we sang, that, that you are the King, the Lord of all. And we crown you the Lord of all. And that you are the King of kings, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Now, Lord, as we come to your word that your Spirit inspired Mark to write now, would your same spirit speak to our hearts? Open our hearts. Remind us. I think most folks know what I'm going to be talking about, but remind us of the grace that you give us. That we can never work our way to you. We receive what you have given us. Or maybe someone will hear that and understand it for the first time. And what a joy that would be as well. So I pray that you would open the eyes of our minds and our hearts to hear from you. I do pray that the words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart would be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. Lord, you are my rock and my redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <coughs> Excuse me. Mark chapter 10, beginning at verse 13, and we're going to go through 31. Hear the word of the Lord. People were bringing little children to Jesus to have him touch them, but the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he was indignant. He said to them, let the little children come to me, and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. I tell you the truth. Anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. And he took the children in his arms, put his hands on them, and blessed them. As Jesus started on his way, a man ran up to him and fell on his knees before him. Good teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good, Jesus answered. No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments, do not murder, do not commit adultery, do not steal, do not give false testimony, do not defraud, honor your father and mother. Teacher, he declared, all these I have kept since I was a boy. Jesus looked at him and loved him. One thing you lack, he said, go sell everything you have and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. At this, the man's face fell. He went away sad because he had great wealth. Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it is for the rich to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were amazed at his words. But Jesus said again, Children, how hard is it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were even more amazed and said to each other, Who then can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, With man this is impossible. 
but not with God. All things are possible with God. Peter said to him, we have left everything to follow you. I tell you the truth, Jesus replied, no one who has left home or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for me and the gospel will fail to receive a hundred times as much in this present age. Homes, brothers, sisters, mothers, children, and fields, and with them persecutions. And in the age to come, eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last first. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <coughs> I'm so sorry, something's stuck in my throat. At just the wrong time. See if these phrases are something that you recognize. I'm sure you will. Pull yourself up by your bootstraps. God helps those who help themselves. He got everything the old-fashioned way. He worked for it. Work hard and you will be rewarded. It's ingrained in us. Particularly here in western Pennsylvania, the attitude, I will work for what I need. I will work for what I want. And that is certainly a good thing. The Bible teaches us in 2 Thessalonians 3, if a man does not work, he shall not eat. We rightly praise hard work. Think about the Olympics that are going on right now. And the hours and the, the work and the pain and the sweat and what it took to become one of the greatest athletes in the entire world. Generally speaking, we know that hard work pays off, and we rightly lift that up. Hard work pays off in everything, except our relationship to God. When it comes to our relationship to God, we can never work hard enough. We can never do good enough. Jesus said we are saved by his grace, not by our works. And in today's text that I just read, he illustrates that in two different ways with people he encounters on his way to Jerusalem. The scene will, will change dramatically next week in Mark as he is in Jerusalem headed toward the cross. We've been talking over the last few weeks about this idea of always keeping truth and grace together. We Presbyterians are, are good at erring on the truth side. You've got to have your doctrine right. That's a good thing. There's nothing wrong with that. And we've had some hard truths in the last two sermons from Mark. One on hell. One on marriage and divorce. And inspired by the Holy Spirit, Mark then reminds us, oh, it's all about grace at the same time. So the message I, I want you to hear, I want to remind you of, I want to remind myself of, is that the gospel message is about God's grace and not our works. May we receive and live in his grace and share it with others. The gospel message is about God's grace, not our works. May we receive it and live in his grace today and share it with others. I'm going to start this morning by looking at little children. Then we'll look at the human heart. And then we'll ask, what does this mean? It means we're called to be people of grace. First, be a child. Verse 13, people were bringing little children to Jesus to have him touch them, but the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he was indignant. He said to them, let the little children come to me. Do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. I tell you the truth, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. And he took the children in his arms, put his hands on them, and blessed them. Them. According to Jesus, not Pastor Jefferson, according to Jesus, we will not enter his kingdom unless we do so like a little child. Not childish, but childlike. So think for a moment about a little baby. 
those precious, cute, little newborn babies, what can they do for themselves? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. They need to be fed. They need to be clean. They need to be changed. They need to be exercised. You have to take their little legs and move them and their arms and move them. Then they become a little bit older and they come to our preschool and they can do a few things, but you still have to take them everywhere. You still have to provide the food. You have to put them to bed. When you're a child, everything is done for you. Our natural attitude I don't know if it's specific to where we live here in Western Pennsylvania, but it is true here in Western Pennsylvania. The attitude we're born with is, Jesus, let me do something. What do I need to do to get into the kingdom? Tell me the admission price. I got it. Jesus says, no, you don't understand. Now, we need to understand that, that culturally at that time, children were nothing. Absolutely nothing. There's no baby gap to shop at. There's no car seats. There's no strollers. In fact, the pendulum has now swung way too far the other way, where there's entire industries for children. And, and sadly, in most homes, children run the house. But back then, they were absolutely nothing. That's why the disciples rebuked, they rebuked the people. Get the kids out of here. Think about how many churches have been ruined by people thinking like the disciples. Get the noisy kids out of here, They're spilling stuff on the carpet. Get them out of here. Jesus was indignant. I looked that up in English, and, and the, the definition of indignant is to be angry or annoyed at an injustice. Jesus is highly annoyed here. Not only is he saying that kids are indeed valuable, which he is definitely saying, but he's also teaching a lesson. Kids are completely helpless. They are totally dependent on the work of another. And he says that is how you get into God's kingdom. Totally dependent on the work of another. Be a child. Well, then he goes and meets someone who shows us a little bit about the human heart, which that famous theologian John Calvin called the human heart an idol factory. We will put other things ahead of God in our hearts. Verse 17, as Jesus started on his way, a man ran up to him and fell on his knees before him. Good teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good? Jesus answered, no one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. Do not murder, do not commit adultery, do not steal, do not give false testimony, do not defraud, honor your father and mother. Teacher, he declared, all these I have kept since I was a boy. Jesus looked to him and loved him. One thing you lack, he said, go sell everything you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. At this the man's face fell. He went away sad because he had great wealth. Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, how hard it is for the rich to enter the kingdom of God. This verse 22 tells us very wealthy man shows up. Hey, Jesus, good teacher. What's the gimmick? What do I have to do? Go on a mission trip to Haiti? Give 25% of my income? Give to the Salvation Army at Christmas. You tell me, Jesus, and I'm going to do it. I'm in. Eternal life. Now remember, Jesus says he defines eternal life in John 17, 3 as a relationship with God and Jesus who has been sent. So he's looking for this relationship with God. What do I got to do? Jesus starts off by saying, well, first of all, only God is good. And let's just start with commandments. Murder, adultery, and he goes down the list. And this guy's getting excited. Check, 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 check. I'm in! <clears throat> Jesus says one more thing. All that wealth you have, sell it. Give it to the poor. Come and follow me. Wait, what? 
Jesus is revealing to the man that indeed he hasn't even followed the first commandment. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. This man is not willing to give up his wealth, proving that that indeed is his God. Did you notice what it said right before that when Jesus uh, looked at him in verse 21? Jesus looked at him and loved him. I looked up the word look as it was uh, in the original Greek. And, and the word can mean gaze at with concern. Gaze at with interest for your well-being. Jesus looked at him with concern and love. Knowing that he had a God in his life above the true God. And this is the way Jesus loves all sinners. He looks at every one of us. And maybe wealth is not our God. Maybe something else is. He looks at us with concern and intent. And says, come and follow me. Repent and believe the good news in the Gospel of Mark. Now you might be tempted to say... Pastor Jefferson, there is something I do. I repent. And I believe the good news. See, there is something I do. Indeed, there is. But Ephesians tells us that's even a gift from God. Ephesians 2, 8, 9. For by grace you have been saved through faith. This is not your own doing. It is the gift of God and not a result of works, so that no one may boast. The disciples hadn't read that yet, because Paul hadn't written it yet. And they ask this question, well, who then can be saved? And they ask it because Jesus says this absolutely absurd thing. Jesus looked around and said to the disciples, how hard it is for the rich to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were amazed at his words, but Jesus said again, children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. A camel through the eye of a needle. Now you may have heard, as I have heard, and has often been taught, that there was a gate in Jerusalem called the eye of the needle. And for a camel to go through that, they would have to get really low, and it would be severely difficult Scholars find no evidence for that explanation. When Jesus said it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle, he was thinking of what everyone would know as the eye of a needle that you all know is so stinking small you can't even get the thread through it. So how is a camel going to go through it? It's impossible. It's impossible. Jesus says, it's impossible, except for with God. With God, anything is possible. Jesus is telling the disciples, he's telling us that only God can change a stone, cold, sinful heart and make it beat for him and desire to turn and to repent and believe the good news. Only God can do that. And when we understand that, and when we receive the kingdom like that, say, God, if I'm going to know you, if I'm going to be right with you, if I'm going to be saved now and through all eternity, I have to depend totally on what you did on the cross. Nothing that I can do. When we understand that, we share it. And he says, the last will be first. Well, now what, Pastor Jefferson? We're called to be people of grace. If we have received his grace, and, and, and understand that, that there's nothing we can do. So you mean I don't have to go to church, and I don't have to be on that committee, and I don't do all those things. That is a good thing to do. Hebrews tells us not to forsake meeting together, not to try and earn our way to God's favor, but to rejoice in being together and lifting up his name and worshiping him on a weekly and often basis. Yes, go on mission trips. Yes, tithe. Yes, do those things. 
in thankfulness to what God has done for us. If we have received that grace and understand that grace, we're called to give up our pride. Receive it. Thank Him for the idea that we can understand to receive it, because it's a gift from Him. And then daily seek to be filled with His grace and live His grace and treat others with His grace. There's a great scene in the movie Fireproof. If you've never seen that movie, go home this afternoon and find it on Netflix or wherever it is. I'm sure it's on a number of different things. Fireproof. In the one scene, Kirk Cameron, who plays, uh, I believe his character's name is Caleb, Caleb's walking with his dad. And Caleb doesn't understand this relationship with God, and he said, and Caleb's a firefighter. And he says, Dad, I'm a good person. I save people. When they're burning, I save them out. I'm a good person, Dad. And the dad so wisely says, this is not a direct quote, but the dad so wisely says, Caleb, Saving people from a fire doesn't make you right with God. You have to receive, like a child, His grace and thank Him and praise Him for it. For Jesus' work, His life, His death, His resurrection, the Holy Spirit changing your heart, He does it all. What we do is say thank you. Our closing song this morning is that Great hymn, Amazing Grace. John Newton, who wrote it, of course, you know that story, I'm sure, was a slave trader. They said that he used to make up profanities. His heart was hard. He had nothing to do with God, wanted nothing to do with God. And his life was totally changed by the grace and love of God. And he wrote that beautiful testimony called Amazing Grace, that we will sing later this morning. In of our church, Pastor Jefferson, gospel message is about God's grace, not our works. May we receive it and live in His grace and then share it with everyone that we come around. Let's pray. Lord, there's a scripture that says, if you kept the record of our wrongs, who could stand? And the answer is no one. Jesus in this text today said it this way, that who can be saved? Well, it's impossible. Except for with you, Lord God. You make all things possible. Lord, I thank you for this reminder this morning that we are saved by your grace. We are made right by you and what Jesus has done in his life, death, and resurrection. Nothing that we could ever do. Oh Lord, don't let that make us lazy. Sit back and not do things because you've called us then to good works. You've called us to live out our faith. You even said faith without works is his death. So help us to live out in thanksgiving the faith that, that we receive by grace. I pray, Lord, that, that this congregation, myself, would be moved closer in understanding what you've done for us this morning. Lord, if there's anyone watching this video or anyone here that maybe never understood that for the first time, or never understood that before, and today your spirit did wake them up, and they understand that. We praise you for that. Today is the day of salvation. Thank you for that brother or sister in Christ. Pray that, that every day they would live in grace and share that. Thank you for calling us to receive your grace, to live in your grace. I need it. We all need it. We thank you and praise you in Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. We have the opportunity this morning, as is our, excuse me, as is our custom on the first Sunday of the month, to respond to God's word by coming and receiving his grace. 
He has given us things that uh, are sensible signs. Well, what do you mean by that, Pastor Jefferson? What I mean by that is you can see this bread. You can smell it. Didn't mean to do that. You can taste it. If we had the juice to pour into the cup, you'd even be able to hear it. He's given us sensible signs to remind us of a relationship with him, to point us to that reality that we have now and forever. So please come to this table. This table does not belong to Hanover Presbyterian Church. It doesn't belong to the Evangelical Presbyterian Church. It belongs to the Lord Jesus Christ. And he calls to his communion table all who come in faith, repentance, and love. It's not a right to come to this table given to a bunch of worthy people because we are all unworthy. It is a privilege given to those who will come in faith, repentance, and love. Search your heart, ask for forgiveness of sin, and run to this table and receive grace from the Lord, the bread of life, the one who satisfies those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Let's pray. Oh Lord God, you did not have to give us these sensible signs, but you did, because you love us. You desire to be with us. You love rebellious people. So much that you entered time and space and lived among us and died on the cross and rose again. And, and tell us as we trust in that, as we repent and believe that good news, we are right with you. And then you call us to this communion that reminds us of our unity with you. It reminds us of our unity with our other brothers and sisters in Christ, both here in this building and around the world. It reminds us of the unity that we have with believers who have gone on and are with you. And it points us forward to that time when you will return and be our, you will be our God and we will be your people and we will all eat together with you. How joyful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I pray, Lord, that we would come, receive grace and mercy and peace and joy as we come together for communion. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Those who are serving, I'm going to ask you to come forward and uh, we will pass out. You will pick up the cup and the juice. Hold on to them both. We will all take them together. And what a blessing it is that we had to make more. What a joy that is this morning.
He took the bread and he broke it. Then he gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Eat this in remembrance of me. Likewise, he took the cup. So this cup is the blood of the new covenant shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Drink this in remembrance of me. Friends, every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the saving death of the risen Lord until he comes again. It has become our custom, a great one, to sing in response in Christ alone. Let's stand and sing in Christ. to her knee and can barely walk. I don't think she can walk at all. She can't put weight on her legs. If you pray for Jean Ellis, I would appreciate that. Are there other things that you could, uh, you desire to share and lift up this morning? Ray. What was the name I could... The Hubbard family. On a loss of Hector. Hector, okay. 
Sure. Thank you. Wayne. I would like to give thanks to uh, God for a safe hike uh, by the troop and also the uh, stop that we made on behalf of the church and everything that went on there that was very, very helpful and, and uh, received very well. And also a very good week at summer camp uh, despite the torrential rains and thunderstorms and everything that is. Uh, everything but the tornado, thank goodness. Who is the Lord? Praise God. Praise God. Jermaine. For my uncle, uh, my elderly uncle who was in a nursing home not doing well, and for safe travel, uh, my family members came in from out of town for a wedding yesterday. Just to take it back home safe today. Indeed, safe travel and for your uncle. Sure. Therese. The one part I didn't hear was who was that? Okay. Trying to figure out an infection in the leg, is that what you said? Yes. Okay. The fans up here are making it hard to hear. Tammy. Uh, yesterday, uh, Dalton and Misty's son turned one, so we had, it was so fantastic that a camp thing, it was really nice. And Lynn was pregnant. How exciting. How exciting. Lots of grandkids for you there. <laughs> Praise God. Michelle. Carolyn Young's back. Hey. <laughs> Miss Carol is here. Oh, what a blessing. Kathy. I have two praises. The first one is that my mom. Was allowed to go to the church picnic and she had a glorious time. She uh, made sure that everyone knew who she was. <laughs> she didn't recognize anyone else, but she made sure they, uh, that she had a great time. The second phrase is that my brother Clifford had a spaghetti dinner yesterday and it was very, very successful. Well, praise God for the, the fundraiser to help out Cliff and what he's been going through. And then just in case you didn't hear that, what a joy it was uh, for all of us at the picnic on Wednesday to see Mitzi there. And, and praise God that that was allowed to happen and you were willing to make that happen. Beautiful thing. Wayne. There was one other safe journey that I'd like to praise God for, and that was the return of the butlers. And also right. ask for prayers for the Sabbaths and their safe return. Absolutely. Yeah, we, we praise God for that and a, and a good time with my family and my dad. So awesome. thank God for that. That's true. And I praise God for the surprise of you being here to play the piano. <laughs> <laughs> what, a, what a what a blessing. Don. Yeah, earlier you had mentioned that you saw the space station flying over, and I was outside last night to observe it also. With my son Jonathan on the telephone in Virginia, oh, and him and Jake got to see it. So when it's straight up in the air like this, John can see it coming over the trees on the horizon. Oh, and that's, that's how cool. much of a difference there is. So it's kind of neat that you mentioned that. Was there another hand somewhere? Penny. Praise God in <laughs> Let's thank him for all his many blessings. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the gift of new life, for the return of friends that we've missed, for safe travel, 
for the memories of young scouts on a hike. Lord, I, I don't need to mention individually each thing. You are here, you are present, you hear our hearts, you hear the joys, and you hear the concerns. You hear the concerns that we didn't mention out loud, that are deep on our hearts, for loved ones, their physical care, loved ones who don't know you, they don't have that relationship and the joy of that relationship. Lord, we pray and lift up all of these to your name, and we thank you that you love us so much that you not only save us, but then tell us, come, come and drop your anxieties to Jesus. Wow. Thank you. Lord, we thank you for this place in which we live. We ask for your mercy upon us. There's so much disagreement and different things out there in our world. At least that's how it's presented often, Lord. I pray for your peace and your mercy in people's hearts. I pray that you would turn the hearts of leaders to you for true wisdom. And we thank you for those that, that do have true wisdom. We ask that there would be more and more. We pray for those who serve our country in the military, those who serve in, in uh, volunteer firemen and women, those who are policemen and women. Lord, we pray for those who work in the schools. We pray for our preschool as we begin the, the mode of preparing for another school year. Pray that you would work out all the details and you would get all the glory. Lord, we thank you for this past week, the amazing picnic, and the new people, the, the 27 people from the park that went home with that gift bag that included a New Testament, included gospel booklets. Lord, I, I pray that your spirit would move in their hearts and that you might be working through that. Thank you for the Communicycle ministry. We thank you for so much. We praise you. Pray for those who mourn the family that yesterday had a memorial service for Susan Herstock. We lift up her family. We lift up Bootsy and Betty and Mitzi. Thank you that Penny's here and we continue to lift her up. We continue to lift up Dave Fig. We need we lift up Aries Dad. We need you. We love you and praise you. Please hear us now as we come together in one voice, praying as you taught us. Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. We respond to God's word by giving of our time and our abilities and the resources he's given us in the first place. So I invite the ushers to come forward and receive the tithes and offerings given in faith.
that your word might go out throughout western Pennsylvania and throughout your world, and that you would provide for every need of your people. Thank you, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Just a couple quick announcements, and, and one has already been mentioned a little bit, and that is just thank you so much to everyone who's given over the last few weeks. You gave for the uh, water stop for the, the hikers. You gave for Vacation Bible School. Yesterday we had a memorial service and a lunch for the family of Susan Kerstein. Some of you know her. Um, that's the yellow bracelet was for. Her husband made them in, in her memory and her honor. Um, and many of you helped with the, that yesterday and as well as the picnic on Wednesday. A lot of help and, and amazing things went into that and we saw a good response. Met a lot of new people uh, from the trailer park that have only been there a year or less. And then also uh, the blessing the Communicycle ministry was to be there as well. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So now you get to rest for a little bit. Rest in the, the month of August. And come to the picnic. The picnic is on the 15th. Now just so we're all on the same page about that. Our worship service will be at 11 on that morning at the park. Um, we'll put signs up here in case anybody forgets and comes here. But at the rec hall at the park, um, we'll start our worship service, Lord willing, outside, uh, weather permitting, at 11 o'clock. Following that, um, we will eat. So please bring a side dish or a dessert to share. And you know that there's the sand volleyball court, the basketball court, the playground. I hope you'll come. I hope you'll invite your friends and family to join us. It's always, always a, a really fun time to be up there. And then the final announcement that I have, we had our first worship service at Lakeview Nursing Home last Sunday afternoon. And what a blessing that was. Uh, I don't know exactly how many, but I would say between 8 and 12 residents uh, were there, as well as a few of us to uh, sing with them and to praise God. And we had a very short message. We sang some hymns, which those folks sang incredible. It was a beautiful sound. So we will, uh, I have set up for us to do that again on Sunday, August 29th. It's the last Sunday of the, uh, of the month at 3 p.m. So I hope you might want to join us at the Lakeview Nursing Home that day uh, to help the residents worship God. And it's a blessing. Anything I'm forgetting that needs to be announced? Dorothy. Oh. Go ahead. Are you on me, Sal? Thank you. We had food left over from yesterday's lunch. So we have lunch for you. Uh, we'll have some. The lunch food will be available after uh, the worship service and then also after Sunday school. Uh, adult Sunday school will meet in here to finish up what we've been doing over the last two weeks, and the kids will be uh, with Kathy, I believe, today. Um, so you're welcome to stay for Sunday school and have lunch afterwards, or you're welcome to make some lunch following the service. But please uh, help us get, get, get rid of all the leftovers. Tom. Yes, I'd like to meet with a praise team at the church if we could. We can right after, we'll come right up here in front of me. Good idea. Praise team, meet with Tom. All right, our closing song is that amazing one. Let's uh, let's stand and, and just sing with our heart. Amazing grace.
song, what a great truth, what a great reminder that we are saved by the grace of the Lord God. Live in His grace today and share it with everyone that you meet. Now receive the benediction. Lord bless you and keep you. Lord make His face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace. Don't forget about the food.